Church, until we believe this, we look at people on the street who smoke as less than us instead of as my brother and sister. You look at the person who's walking into the gay nightclub as an enemy instead of your brother and sister. Keeping his covenant with me. I'm not in covenant with a person. I'm not in covenant with a political party. I'm in covenant with God Almighty. I am God Almighty. I started giving on that level so that God would owe me. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You can't handle that. I started giving on the level where I put God in debt and God said, I'll owe no man. What's up guys, Kanam Kendia. I just want to come here and address something real quick. I wanted to speak about false preachers. I was very hesitant to mention any names, but I'm gonna go ahead and mention names, you know, because these people have to be exposed. They have to be called up for what they are doing. So I'm speaking of the likes of Mike Todd, Stephen Furtick, and all of these other guys, you know, um, Elevation Music, Maverick City, all of these people that claim Christianity but aren't living like Christ, you know, and I'm speaking directly to Christians that are listening to these false preachers, you know, Christians that are promoting their, their, their sermons, promoting their, their, their teachings, promoting their, their content that they're posting on social media, such as Instagram, etc., etc. We need to stop listening to these people. We need to stop promoting, you know, the, the messages that these guys are spreading around, you know. When I, I always have these conversations with people, and one of the main things most, most people always tell me is the reason why they listen to people like Mike Todd and Stephen Furtick and all of these other people that have consistently preached false doctrine, evidently. I mean, for someone that knows their Bible and you actually listen to their things, um, I'm not one that listens to, you know, their sermons and stuff, but I've seen like shorts that tend to trend. It's always these ones that are far, 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 are far from the truth that trend, trend the most, you know? So whenever I hear these, Sorry about that. Whenever I hear these messages of his, right, most of the time when I correlate them with the Bible, it's always false doctrine. Most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. And the Bible warns us about these type of people in the last days. The Bible warns us about these false preachers, these false teachers, you know. And for someone to be consistently spreading false teaching, it shows where the art is at. You know, the Bible describes someone that repeatedly sins against the Holy Spirit as someone who has a hardened heart. You know, someone whose heart has become hard like a rock. You know, so I don't know what's going on in these pastors' hearts or these speakers' hearts, but according to what scripture says, we can conclude that a lot of these people have hardened hearts, all right? And oftentimes I speak to Christians and I ask them, why do you guys listen to these preachers? I ask new believers, why do you listen to these preachers when they're speaking false doctrine? And a lot of these guys defend speakers such as Mike Todd and Stephen Furtick with saying such as, it's, it's because of them that I came to Christ. It's because of them that I started believing and I'm like okay there's nothing wrong with that okay it's good that Stephen Furtick or Mike Todd's preaching is what brought you to Christ but it doesn't mean you should stay listening to them after you've come to the truth the verse or the scripture that inspired this thought is the, the story of the Israelites when the Israelites were going from Egypt to Israel we find we find that at some point in time the Israelites got thirsty right they eat a spot in the desert where there was no water and they got thirsty so they started crying for water and Moses obviously turned to God and was like, God, um, your people need water. They're thirsty. God told Moses, strike the rock, and the rock is what will give them water. Right? In the time of need, God satisfied the thirst with a rock. So now let's, let's correlate that to us, right? In your time of need, where you felt like you needed some help, God used a person with a, a, person with a hardened heart to satisfy your thirst for the living water, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, you received Christ through Stephen Furtick. You received Christ through Mike Todd, right? That was God using someone with a hardened heart to bring you to him. Okay, I know this is very bold of me. It's very, I know I might get some backlash for calling these people, you know, or describing these people as, as to be having a hardened heart. But that is what it is, right? If you're consistently speaking false doctrine without any form of repentance, it really shows where your heart is at. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Okay, Mike Todd or Stephen Furtick or any of these people that 
you know, preach along the lines of these people, they brought you to Christ. That's good, right? The Israelites, when they were thirsty, God used a rock to give them water. All right, just like you, when you were thirsty, um, searching for living water, Christ used someone with a hardened heart to introduce you to the living water, right? But when we read the story of the Israelites, when they were thirsty, once they finished drinking from that water, right, and they, their thirst was um, satisfied, what did God tell them? God told them, okay, leave that rock and continue moving. God told them, okay, leave that rock there and continue moving, right? Imagine if the Israelites had to say, okay, God, we're happy that this rock gave us water and we decided we're going to stay here. We're not going to move any further. They would never have reached the promised land. And them choosing to stay at that location where the rock was at would have meant that they, they were now vulnerable to the enemies. The enemies could have come from any direction because we know that there were always people chasing the Israelites. There was always some sort of enemy trying to kill them, right? That's why they had to keep moving, right? And, keeping, and in them keeping moving is what obviously advanced them closer to the promised land, but also kept them or kept a, 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 safe, a safe distance between them and the enemies. Imagine if we had to say, look at God, we're happy that this rock gave us water and we're going to choose to stay here now. We're not going to move forward. We're going to choose to stay where this rock is at and keep drinking the water coming from this rock. They would have probably died, right? Now correlate that with you that listens to these false preachers. Okay, good. You were introduced to the living water, which is Christ, through this person with a hardened heart, this rock, right? And that person spoke a message that touched you in your time of need. He satisfied your thirst. But God is telling you right now, it's time to leave that rock and move on, right? You've been exposed to the false preaching that these people are spreading. Despite the message that touched you and brought you to Christ, you've been exposed to the false preaching that they've been spreading all around. And you've been enlightened to the nonsense that these people be speaking. It's time to leave that rock where it is and move on. Why? Because if you stay holding on to that rock, it's going to cause you to miss out on your, on your destiny, right? You can only listen to lies so many times before you start believing them, right? If I give you, if I give you um, four truths and one lie, that lie, if you listen to consistently, no matter how many truths, truths I give you, right? If you listen to that, that lie consistently, eventually it's going to start corrupting you, right? And what will, what will happen is your knowledge of the truth will be tainted, right? Because truth is absolute, right? The moment you compromise one element of truth, it's no longer the truth, right? I can say a lot of satisfying things, but that one thing that corrupts what I'm saying does a whole, you know, a whole lot of damage. It's almost like when you, um, when, a, when a shop, right when a shop buys a box of apples they judge the quality of the apples based on the purity of all the apples right the moment that there's one apple that's rotten or corrupted they completely discard that box they don't want that box anymore right why because that one corrupt apple can corrupt the rest of the apples right the same with these guys they give out motivation speeches they speak motivational you know motivational things to us or to, to the public, right? They encourage you, yes. But then when it comes to like scripture and doctrine, they're always giving false doctrine, right? So yeah, they're motivating you, but that false doctrine that they're spreading to your ears, it's only a matter of time before you begin to be corrupted in your mind. Because you can only listen to lies so many times before you start believing it. And before it starts becoming part of who you are, to the point where when you're speaking to other people, you start speaking lies to those people as well, because you've been filling your heart. You've been filling your heart with all of these lies, right? So. To correlate um, uh, the, the story of the Israelites to our story, because basically the Israelites, when we read in the Bible about the Israelites, they are describing us Christians, right, on our way from um, from the Promised Land, or from Egypt, sorry, from a life of slavery to the Promised Land. Likewise, we are um, going from the our life from slavery to sin to the Promised Land, which is paradise or God's will for our lives. You get what I mean? The Israelites had to leave that rock that gave him water that the rock introduced into water so that they can enter into God's promises. And likewise, you need to leave that, that preacher or that speaker with a hardened heart who introduced you to the living water of Christ in order for you to reach the promised land. Maybe not even preachers, maybe it's even um, these, these um, Christian artists, quote unquote, that are spreading false doctrine in the music because lots of them, Mavericks at the Elevation, these guys are speaking nonsense in the music, right? And it sounds so... It sounds so spiritual because of the melodies they use, but if you really like listen to what they're saying and you, how can I say, you filter them through the scripture, then you realize how far from the truth the stuff they're speaking are, right? If you choose to keep on and hold on to them, 
Chances are you're not going to reach the promised land. You're not going to reach the promised land. Right? There were wolves in the desert. There were lions in the desert. All of these, there were all of these, um, these, these animals that could have ripped them apart, they were now becoming vulnerable to this, to this, um, to the, yeah, to these, to these dangers, right? And obviously we can say, okay, God was not protect him. But then they were being disobedient to God because God told them, look here, leave. If they chose to stay, they automatically take themselves out of the will of God, right? Same with you. God has bigger things for you. Yes, he used someone with a hardened heart to bring you to him. But it's time to move on. Right? The longer you choose to hold on to the rock, the longer you prolong your destiny. And who's to say that, who's to say that after God commanded the rock to, to bring forth water, who's to say that the moment that he, God said, look, you move on, the water didn't get corrupted. Think about it, right? The only reason why the water came from the rock was because God commanded the rock to give out water. But when God said, look here, it's time to move. Who's to say that the water didn't get corrupted, didn't get dirty, or wasn't, was no longer potable? Because the only reason why it was potable was because God made it potable. It's only a matter of time before dirty water has an effect on you. Right? You can drink the water and it satisfies your thirst. It's only a matter of time before the bacteria that's in the water starts impacting your health. And I'm not speaking from a physical perspective, I'm speaking from a spiritual perspective. It's only a matter of time before these lies that these guys are speaking starts impacting you. And by the time you realize, it's probably gonna be, I'm not going to say it's going to be too late, but uh, the damage would, would have already been done, if you get what I mean. So yeah, that's the thought of the day. I was really feeling pressed to speak about this the whole entire week. And I've been delaying it, delaying it, delaying it, because I know that there's going to be some backlash from, from, these, from diehard fans. But the Bible says we will know them by their fruits. We will know them by their fruits. I get that sometimes we might make mistakes, right? So all of us make mistakes. There might be a time where you're speaking and you happen to mix a certain scripture with another, or you happen to, I'm going to say, misinterpret something, you know, um, a verse in the context that was being spoken. I get that. But if someone's doing it consistently, and when they are confronted about it, they always find a way to try and defend what they said. They say something about their heart. Right? Find preachers that are sound as far as doctrine is concerned, as far as scripture is concerned. Find preachers that are spreading the word of God as it is and are not trying to compromise the word of God to fit the narrative of society. Right? Find preachers that are speaking the word of God unfiltered the way that it is for your growth. Otherwise, if you choose to hold on to that rock with a hardened heart, with a preacher with a hardened heart, chances are you're going to die in the desert and you might never ever reach your promised land. Yeah, that's the message of the day. God bless you and I hope that this message finds you well. Um, I was feeling pressed to speak about this so I'm just being obedient. Um, whatever comes, comes. God bless you.